Hello, hello. It's a new balance shoe. It's only right. And on this one, new balance. SC Elite V4. Now this, if I was to title this video very simply, it'd be a masterclass on how you update a running shoe. Nothing in this shoe is the same in the previous version, the version three. So version four, we've got a lot to talk about. I went to the launch event too, so watch this. I'm a runner and I'm good with being me. On this one, I wanna to talk to you about New Balance's race day shoe. Now, New Balance is not messing around. They produce this, the 1080 V13. Currently my go-to daily trainer when I want something plush and cushioned, really love it. It's excellent to see them follow that up with the new lineup of shoes they're about to produce. And of course, starting with this one, SE Elite V4. The three things you need to know about, let's start with the price. 260 pounds, that's up there. Secondly, the weight. Now, reviewers are gonna have a tough time trying to find faults with this shoe, I promise you that. But if there's one thing probably you could criticize is the weight. Let me paint the picture. Nike Vaporfly 3, 213 grams in a size nine and a half UK. Adidas's Pro 3, 227 grams. 235, and then coming in 10 grams heavier is 245 grams. Now look, for me personally, this year I've just changed my whole view. If weight is justified by giving me stuff that's gonna be useful in the shoe, I don't care one bit. But if we're gonna criticize something in this shoe, it's the weight. I've got something else we're gonna talk about in a bit, but that's the one thing I would say in comparison to the other race day shoes. All right, let's move on to stack. I like this. They've pushed it to the limit, 40 mil, and 36 at the front being a four mil drop. That's very, very short of a drop. And you know what? I love it. What is this shoe for? This is your race day shoe. This is New Balance's absolute number one choice for your marathon, your half marathon. You know what? I'm taking this bad boy on a 10K. I'm taking it on a 5K, simply because of two things. It's got propulsion. We'll talk about the midsole in a bit, but the comfort and the cushioning you get from this, I love it. I love it. Aubrey, you were invited to the launch event, so you're just gonna be a fanboy and say all these nice things about the shoe. Is that right? No, no. I've already told you about the weight. I've compared it to the other shoes, my race day choices. This happens to be of the shoes that I've shown you out of four, this is the heaviest one. The second thing, now I normally have an order to my reviews. I wanna break that in this and trying to show you what I think could have been done to improve it. One, the tongue. Now, I know I talk and I bang on about tongues being gusseted. I wish this tongue here it was gusseted, but it's not. The second thing about the tongue, it has the same texture all the way through, and it's quite a very a thin tongue. I would have loved to have a bit more uh, padding on the tongue, that when you tie down on the laces, it gives you that comfort. I did feel it a little bit on this little 5K run that I did, but I would have loved to see a bit more padding in this tongue. So in addition to make it gusseted, I would have loved to see it have a bit more uh, plushiness to the tongue, but I know that that then further adds to the weight, which I've just already mentioned. So let's break the shoe down, a conversation, starting from the top, working our way down. Right, let's start with the heel. Now look, I've seen some people criticizing how thin the heel looks. If you look at that collar, how thin it is. Well, guess what? It's quite in line with a lot of race day shoes. That's your Rocket X2. That's even thinner. Um, when you look at the Adidas, Adidas's shoe, that's it. So don't expect your race day shoes to have a lot of thickness, but in fact, if you will, this, amongst the shoes I've just shown you, this is the more padding. Now here's where we start unwinding the weight thing I talked about because the shoes I've just shown you have got a very thin heel collar. 
that offers you padding and I appreciate that. In terms of the back, it also has very good structure, very good support and that is quite common within the race day shoes but a lot of them can be quite the flimsy type. Either way, I had a very good lockdown, no complaints, no blisters or anything like that. But I must say, I do appreciate this lacing system. I always say on my reviews, look, they got holes all along there, running through there. The laces go through, no complaints for me whatsoever. And in terms of the laces themselves, boom. It's very thin profile laces. Aubrey, let's talk about this upper. They're calling it Phantom Fit. Now, you know, if you watch my reviews, I always throw away uh, proprietary kind of names because they don't mean anything. All you need to know, there is a single mesh upper and this thing feels nice. Not very technical, I know, but I hold it up to the light. Can I see the light on the other side? Yes, I can. Highly breathable. They're calling it Phantom Fit, a deviation from that booty fit, which I referred to from before, where it was all one piece in the SCLE V3. A lot of people love that. I love it, but I do prefer Simple, I do prefer old school, and that's what they've done here. But just look at this upper. Somebody went to art class, asked for all the crayons, and decided to do some stuff. Now, I'm not even just talking about the colorway, but the way they've put that upper together. Wait, hold on, hold on. That thing is edible. That thing looks beautiful. All right, fine, let's move on to the midsole. Now, here, here, easily, easily the star of the show. Easily. Let's talk about it. Two things, we're gonna talk about the performance of the midsole and the look of the midsole. So let's start with the performance. They've gone from, yeah, very good midsole to the best there is, Piba. Now Piba is what you're gonna find in your ultimate, ultimate race day shoes. Now this time, it's 100% of that, all the way through. Now this midsole is in two layers. You've got a top layer over here, and then the bottom layer sandwiching a carbon plate. Can you see that where it says, there, 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 over there, you can see it. Now that carbon plate, not only is thinned out compared to the V3, it has then got these ripples, like waves running through it, that adds the resilience to the plate, but also its return of energy, the way it'll spring back up after you've kind of towed off. I like this. Now, this all sounds complicated, I know, but here's how to simplify it. This shoe, has gone 10% lighter compared to its predecessor, and that weight reduction has been found in two, for me anyway, in two ways. The carbon plate's been made thinner but stronger, if that makes sense, and also, you're gonna see cutouts of that midsole. That is taking out one, where you don't need all of that foam, bring it out, but also, that then helps a spread of energy that when you step down, the compression of that midsole and it's springing back up, it's gonna turn you into like, I don't even know what a New Balance athlete is. A Philly Bowden. That's what it's gonna turn you into. Yeah. <laughs> All right, more importantly, the look, right? Now, I know it sounds superficial, but you know what? The shoe needs to look good. That midsole, right? They've looked, it looks like somebody went, ooh, that's a nice midsole, but no. <clears throat> <clears throat> took an ax to it and chopped to it and now it's in all, all sorts of angles. That's why they're calling it angular. Look at, wait. It feels like, you know one of those 3D printers that starts printing but it hasn't finished printing yet? Yeah, like that. Honestly, honestly, that can be on a pedestal in a museum and I can just look at it. Look, look at that. I'm telling you now, I'm getting this shoe in all sorts of colorways when it comes out because I just love the look of it. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, a running shoe must perform, but you know what? It must look good. New Balance, you now have, tick, the most beautiful race day shoe in my collection. That award goes to you. Controversy time, also. Now, I've watched a few reviews and they're talking about the resilience of the rubber and all this kind of stuff, but I feel like none of the reviews I've watched, people have run, in this shoe enough to really test this rubber. So please forgive me, I'm not gonna speak about the durability, but rather let me speak to you about how grippy it is. Well done. We had a run in central London, across the city, in a park, and the park had different terrains. I've then done my own 5K run in this shoe, 
And you know what? I can't complain. I must say though, there are a few parts. If you look closely, exposed midsole. That might be a thing to ask about when we talk about durability, but I can't really comment on that right now. I will, I promise you, I will circle back. Cause you know what? This bad boy is about to go into the rotation. This is here to stay. This shoe is definitely here to stay. Now I know, look, look, I know my own faults. I know I get super caught up. I get super excited about running shoes. I come on here and I sound super passionate about it. But you know what? Excuse me. That is here to stay. Sheesh. Look, if you like this review, you found it informative, entertaining, good use of your time, or whatever you want to call it, you might also like this one. This is my 1080 V13 review, and I love that shoe. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It would be great to have you. Thank you for checking it out. Head to the clouds, feet to the ground.